The Pittsburgh Steelers, well, they were definitely banking on Bud Dupree filling their need at outside linebacker, but he heads to Atlanta. And now we're a few days removed, and I think at this point it's safe to say that there's a pretty serious need for the Pittsburgh Steelers behind T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk and subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts. And today, we're talking about Bud Dupree, the loss of him, and what the Pittsburgh Steelers do next. Because whether they want to admit it, and it's been a couple of years now that it feels like they don't, they have a pretty pressing need at outside linebacker, and they have... Well, minimal options to fill it as of right now. You lose Bud Dupree to the Atlanta Falcons, and for one, you can't even argue the decision. Bud Dupree coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers made a lot of sense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But for Bud Dupree, I don't know how much sense it actually made. It depended on how he viewed the rest of his career. Well, at 30 years old, heading into the back half of what has been a very roller coaster ride of an NFL journey, Dupree decided that He just wants a redemption deal to try and hit the market on a bigger price tag next offseason. So he headed to Atlanta and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, they're left with one outside linebacker behind TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, and that's Quincy Roche. Doesn't make a lot of sense. The Steelers were hoping that Bud Dupree was their guy. He's not. In the meantime, they released Jameer Jones, and we still don't know why you released Jameer Jones. It didn't really make a lot of sense, but... There has to be a reason, whether that reason comes from the Pittsburgh Steelers or it comes from Jameer Jones himself. There had to be something that happened that made those two sides part ways in April after signing a one-year deal in February. So where do you go from here? If you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and you see this need, and you've seen this need for three years now, after the Melvin Ingram thing didn't work out, the Steelers were right back to square one. There is no outside linebacker depth that they have and no reliable option in case somebody goes down. Malik Reed didn't work out. Jameer Jones didn't work out. Derek Tushka didn't work out. The team has been and remains down to scraps. And Quincy Roche, a once draft pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers who had some upside and you know made a little bit of an impact for the New York Giants. Well, he's not a outside linebacker three I'm sorry he's just not so the Steelers have to address it and they have to look at alternative options and they have two big ones they have the NFL draft and they have the remaining free agency and I think you do a little bit of mixing and matching for both so when you look at free agency and that's the place that you start first you got to wonder about guys that have some really serious experience but you also have to understand that chances are those guys aren't coming to Pittsburgh Frank Clark Leonard Floyd Melvin Ingram, Jadavion Clowney, Justin Houston. Maybe a guy like Robert Quinn or Carlos Dunlap could be on that list, but we'll address both of those names later. Those aren't options for the Steelers. Chances are they're not going to get anybody who's looking for serious playing time, who's coming off a starting position on another team, to come to them and play 20 to 25 snaps a game. It's just not a role that any of them are looking for. It's probably not a price tag that any of them are looking for, and they could probably all make bigger impacts across the league on a different team. So the Steelers have to rule out that big name. I think Bud Dupree was probably the biggest name that they would have been able to sign on free agency if that worked out. Then there's the NFL draft where the Steelers have brought in three guys for pre-draft visits. They've done plenty of homework with pro days and at the NFL combine, and you have to think, that maybe they have their eyes on a name like Robert Beal or Tuli Tula Tapoa, who will be a second round, third round guy in the NFL draft. Makes a lot of sense. The Steelers will be sitting there at 80. They'll be sitting there at 49. They'll be sitting there at 120. And you could think, and they could think, well, chances are there's an edge rusher here that fills good depth who could be the next Alex Highsmith because that's exactly where they found Alex Highsmith is in the third round. So maybe they could do it again. You could go as low and as exciting as a name like Nick Herbig, who's Nate Herbig's little brother, who 
he has already started to pound the table for once he walked into the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room. You have other names like Brenton Cox Jr. Uh, Zach Harrison out of Ohio State can make some sense. They've looked at Keon White, whether you view him as an edge rusher or a defensive end is up to you, but there's a lot of names here. Isaiah Foskey is another one that they met with at the Senior Bowl who was very impressed with Mike Tomlin, out, and I would imagine that Mike Tomlin was very impressed with the Notre Dame kid. You have to look at these types of names. With the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're not looking at a high draft pick. He, there's some people that want to talk, and there's rumors floating around about, oh, well, they really like Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness does make a lot of sense for a lot of teams. But the one team that he absolutely doesn't make sense for is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? Because he's not a true edge rusher. If anything, he's more of a Miles Garrett defensive end type role where he could play against tackles and win most of the time. But he's not winning with athleticism. He's winning with power. And you don't win with power off the edge the way that TJ Watt does or Alex Highsmith does in Pittsburgh. You have to have some type of pass rush repertoire, and he has almost none. He's as strong as it gets, and on the inside, and the farther you push him in, I think the more comfortable he becomes, but on the inside, the guy can make havoc happen at all times. In Pittsburgh, he's going to have to do that off the edge behind T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith, which at that point, what's the price tag? Because are you using a first-round draft pick on a player that isn't going to play much as a rookie and might not play much at all the first couple of years of his career? Do you immediately remove consideration of re-signing Alex Highsmith to a longer deal, even though chances are he's going to be somewhat affordable for you guys compared to other teams? Just doesn't make a lot of sense. You look in that entire first round and all the names that are included, that Nolan Smith, the Will McDonald's, those could go in the first round, maybe go at 32 type selections that would have to come in here and definitely play a bigger role or at least have a higher ceiling than what they would have in Pittsburgh because in Pittsburgh you don't really have a ceiling you have a pretty high floor you could do a lot you could make an impact almost instantly but unless somebody goes down you're not going to start you're not going to play more than 20 25 reps a game it just isn't an ideal situation for a guy who people view as a superstar in Lucas Van Ness Nolan Smith Will McDonald, all these guys. So who does make sense? Who is the names that you look at and go, okay, well, maybe the Steelers could sign this guy, bring him in, and it won't make a big deal, and it won't really do much, but it'll be worth the deal, and it'll help their depth, needed depth. There's a name that I think makes a lot of sense that kind of follows the trend of what the Pittsburgh Steelers have been doing younger but older guys at the same time, veteran experience who don't hold huge ground in the NFL. And I think at outside linebacker, the best remaining option there, before we get into other names, and I think there's more prominent ones, but the one that I think stands out and could be a sleeper on the Steelers list is Jordan Jenkins. He's 28 years old. He's coming off a two and a half sack season. He's a two sack a season guy, but three years ago, he had eight sacks. Four years ago, he had seven sacks, all for the New York Jets. He played one year in Houston last year, and now he's off to the free agency market again. He's not a guy that comes in here and makes a huge splash or a major impact, but he's another try at a name like Malik Reed. He's another guy who could come in here and just hopefully fill a role. He's 6'3", 260 pounds, so he meets the bill much more than a guy like Malik Reed did a season ago. Options. He's a good, reliable option. You could also look at other names. I mean, you could look at Bruce Irvin. You could look at Carl Nassib. You could look at Mario Addison. You could look at, you know, Carlos Dunlap or Robert Quinn. And I think both of those guys are definitely options for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but chances are not until after the NFL draft, maybe closer to the start of the season. But if they're going to go old, they might as well make a splash with one of these guys. And I don't know if they're going to. I don't know if the Steelers have it in their minds to say, hey, let's get a veteran guy who needs snaps, who's required to play snaps, who we know is a proven commodity. I will say this. Carlos Dunlap doesn't necessarily play the same position as TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, but what he does do is leave an imprint on a defense everywhere he goes. And Mike Tomlin has said it before that he is so excited that Carlos Dunlap is not 
in the AFC North anymore. Well, maybe they could bring him back, put him on the edge, say, hey, just be a run stuffer here, be physical, join the AFC North, but come to Pittsburgh. Addison is 35 years old, and that's the that's the range that you're looking at with these guys. The Jason Pierre Pauls, the Robert Quinns, the Carlos Dunlaps, the Mario Addisons. It, it's all that's left is older players outside of the really true blooded stars that are still out there in Frank Clark. It's just these older guys looking for any place that they could get, but at least some of them have some real true reliability on the outside. I mean, Jordan Ad- or Mario Addison's coming off of two years in Buffalo, two seasons ago, where he's a five and seven sack machine. I mean, he went through a long stretch here of nine and a half, 11, nine, nine and a half, five and seven sacks per year. And then last year he had one sack in 12 games, but he played for the Houston Texans. Can't expect much there. Could still do it. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking for. That's what I'm trying to get here is it's not going to be a Nolan Smith. It's not going to be a Lucas Van Ness. It's not going to be these shockers on the outside or a a Frank Clark or a Leonard Floyd. It's nothing explosive, nothing that's going to pop heads up and say, what? I can't believe that the Pittsburgh Steelers signed this guy. Instead, it's going to be a, oh, really? The Steelers signed this guy? A quick Google search to see who they signed and who this guy really is. A read the article to make sure that he actually has some talent left and then see that he's probably older or a mid-round guy and doesn't really bring a bunch of headlines, but definitely brings reliability. That's what the Steelers are looking for. That's what they need. That's what Bud Dupree was. If Bud Dupree went anywhere else, think about it in Atlanta. I'm sure that fans in Atlanta weren't, oh my gosh, I can't believe the Falcons just signed Bud Dupree. I bet you a lot of them were like, Bud Dupree, I know that name. I got to check him out. That's who the Steelers will bring in. A guy, and that's who they were targeting, a guy who doesn't move the needle but adds reliability, adds experience, adds veteran leadership, adds the ability, the capability of walking in and starting a couple of games if need be, but could come off the bench and still make an impact. The Steelers are in a hole at outside linebacker. I think it's a super concerning hole for the Steelers and one that I do not understand how three years in a row they found themselves here. Four years, five. I I mean, you look at Alex Highsmith, they got, they got lucky with Alex Highsmith, but the year before that, the Anthony Ciccolo situation that occurred for years, wasn't a solution whatsoever. And then you try to replicate Alex Highsmith, Melvin Ingram. That didn't work out because he didn't want hostages and you had no luck finding somebody after that. The year After that one, it was the Malik Reed era and the, oh, well, we got to try something here, and it didn't work again. And somehow the Steelers have found themselves here for another year in a row. Don't understand how it continues to happen for a team that puts so much emphasis on their defensive line. But it did. And the Steelers' options are slim. But... If they take all the things out, all the factors out of their decisions and just say, hey, screw age, screw this, screw that. We just need a one-year option to get through the season, somebody that's reliable. I think there's some really old vets out there who could still add a little bit of impact and play minimal snaps and be the perfect fit for the Steelers. It's not a long-term solution, and it's certainly not the best solution. But when it's this late in free agency... We're this close to the draft, and there's other needs that teams need to address and that this team needs to address. It's really difficult to say, hey, there's an easy, quick, and very exciting fix to edge rusher for the Steelers. 